Everybody, welcome back to Bayou Time. I'm Harry McCullough. We're talking about COVID, a little slide we've taken recently in the area. And for that, we're bringing on uh, Dr. Mary Esch Days, Infectious Disease at Terrebonne General Health Systems now. Uh, doc, thanks so much for, for coming in. Good to see you. You're welcome. Uh, you know, I, I guess as, an, as a, you know, somebody who's in infectious disease, probably an awesome time to be studying what's going on. It's such a, a, a weird have, time. <laughs> people have learned that infectious diseases is relevant. <laughs> Uh, but but yeah, we, we've all learned a lot about uh, virology and, and a lot of things that are going on. We, we have a new variant now, uh, the Delta variant, and, and I, I don't know if y'all test for every one of them, but we're, we're pretty suspicious the, that it's the in state, our area. Huh? The state tests a certain number of, of viruses from all over the state. They have to be, we don't do the uh, sequencing on all of them. We're not able to. And some is done in Shreveport, most is sent to an outside, a lab outside the state to find out how many of them are this variant. And this is important because the variant seems it's more infectious in that it requires, seems to require fewer viral particles and seems to be aerosolized more easily by the host so it can spread it to more people. Yeah, you know, and as we were talking, obviously, uh, beforehand, uh, we're not doing great with vaccines. Our area is, is, is not doing great. And a lot no. of folks are, are falling back on, I had it, so I don't really need to get the vaccine. But with this variant, it's, it's a little different case. Yeah, the the um, problem is if you have the naturally occurring infection, it does not confer resistance to this particular variant. The variant has figured out how to escape your immune deficiency, whereas with the vaccine, it still recognizes as being a virus that shouldn't be in your body and will attack it. V vaccines en enable your natural immune system to make antibodies and recognize foreign material and attack it. The, um, the science behind doing, making these vaccines is really interesting. The mRNA vir vaccines, which are the Moderna and Pfizer, are entirely different from all the other vaccines we've ever had. They, I'd like to describe, they were developed to treat MERS and SERS, which were out earlier, and they they quit developing because the viruses had gone away. But they kept this model, let's say, in the back closet, right. and they said, "We got it. We got it. We can modify. We can That's modify." Why they did it so fast. And so um, I try to tell people, you think of it as a float going down the street, and you recognize it this week. Well, next week they're gonna roll that float out. They're gonna take that prop off that on the front that says it's Marie Antoinette, and they're gonna take it off. <laughs> and next week they're gonna put a different prop on the front of it, and it's gonna be Bally High. Right. So, in, and so the basic part of it stays the same, but they change the prop so that the prop recognizes one of the spike proteins. Coronavirus has like a series of spikes on it, like a corona. Right. And so that's how the virus is named. Right. Is, corona being out. a crown, right? Yes. Yeah, I got you. So yeah, and that's what it also attacks and makes it so tough on your lungs or your heart or yeah. whatever bad part and, they, they and work you know, on. And the, a lot, there's a lot of work going on on this virus because it's different than any of the viruses. They attack the lungs, they attack the GI tract, a lot, a lot of mm -hmm. nausea, vomiting, diarrhea. They attacked the lungs. And then it activated the, um, the body's reaction to it, made it like a super um, system. They call it a right. cytokine storm. Right. Just, turn, just turned your body immune system on. And then for reasons that are not understood, yet makes you more likely to have a stroke or throw a blood clot in your lungs, which we would not previously have thought of. Right. So, so in some increase in MR. It, 
it does all these things and we don't completely understand why. Right. It seems, it seems like it's traveling after inf inflammation a little bit and, and kind of going just, after those pathways a little bit. It, it turns all these systems on and once they're turned on, it's kind of like getting the cow back in the barn right. and makes everything leak and your lungs get filled with fluid and then you can't breathe and it's not right it's not pleasant right uh but about a minute to go in this segment doc and what what, what age groups are, should be uh, the good thing is we're over 70 percent i guess vac vaccines in in like older nursing homes and yeah, for folks and over 65. what age groups does this variant seem to be targeting well it seems to be attacking the unvaccinated and since the unvaccinated are in children and young adults then it's more likely to attack them it, just because they don't have any immune system and we're trying to to get them up to speed to make sure that they don't have it the a lot of these kids may not be that sick with it but the problem is that when they get don't get that sick they bring it home to the rest of the family i think the most telling one is the nurse in the lafayette area who brought who died from didn't get vaccinated died from covid and has brought it home to both her parents who are very ill mm. and so you would not want to be the one who took it home to the very susceptible the older people right. but the children are getting sick too it you don't hear that much about them but they are in the hospitals i saw the numbers for the number of children in icu at children's hospital in new orleans and they're they've yeah, increased it's, it's real rough the numbers aren't great for us uh there could be a number of different reasons why we the worst parish in the second the worst state in the country it, it bums me out a little bit but but we're not doing good so i guess what you guys have to do is deal with with the game that you're playing well, with what right? we need to do is try to reach more people to get vaccinated and that involves a several prong approach making the vaccine available we have a lot more vaccine to give and making it accessible on people's terms like initially we had to schedule appointments because we had a limited amount of vaccine and now it's pretty much we can do a walk-in we'll give it to you the vaccines are available at multiple drugstores in town they are available at Terrebonne General's um, walk-in on Tuesdays and Thursdays. You can just drive up and get your vaccine. So, hey, and right. Appointments are encouraged. It's on the, the website. But you don't have to just get it there. You can get it anywhere. You can walk Some in. of the doctor's offices have them. The health units have them. Multiple other sites have them. The, and the price is right. Yeah, it's free. <laughs> I mean, the government's trying to give us something right. for free. Trying to, trying to help and out. And we're trying to help. And people have all these reasons why they don't want to get the vaccines. I have sent multiple people there to a website, non-physicians, non-government control, because some people don't trust the government. The New England Journal of Medicine published an article, and you can go to their website, um, New England Journal of Medicine, and you go, then go to COVID and then go to vaccines. And there's this super, superb article by Paul Sachs. It's from last January, but it's excellent. And it has all these reasons why people are afraid to get the vaccines in it. Um, how fast the vaccine came on the market. The, we don't know the long-term side effects. No, but we have a lot of people who haven't gotten the vac. We have far more people who have died now who've gotten it. And I, I, some people don't want to get the vaccine because it's only on emergency approval. Approval is coming. This is one of the safer vaccines we've ever had on the market. And it's far more effective than a lot of our other fax vaccines. The um, Pfizer is like 95% effective the uh, moderna yeah. is right behind that it's less for the johnson and johnson but it's a trade-off it's a one, one shot. shot 
Yeah, and, and it, it's funny, you know, I think a lot of folks were just hoping, hey, we're done, right? It's July 4th, and we're, we're now done. We're, we can all get together. And you know what? I didn't take it, and I didn't get it. I'm good, right? So I'm just going to let everybody else take the vaccine. But now we're finding out that strategy is not working. Well, you, need the more, you need more people vaccinated so that one, if you get one unvaccinated person that gets the disease, that gets in that crowd of... 20 people who also hasn't been unvaccinated, the likelihood of that group getting the disease is much higher with this with COVID-19. This so some folks are actually still catching COVID even though they were vaccinated. Yes, there's a small number. The ones who are getting it seem to have milder infections. The rare is their death. It's so rare that they all make <laughs> Don't laugh. They all make Facebook. The the rare patient right. who gets COVID, who's been vaccinated, gets it. The people who are more likely to have failures from the vaccine are organ transplants, dialysis patients, and those getting chemotherapy. Right. So we're we're asking those people, even if they've gotten vaccinated, to continue to wear the mask and to be careful that they don't get the virus, to don't aren't in places where they might get the virus. Right. right. Be careful. Right. So um, yeah. And, they, and and for family members who of have those in their families, if they tell you, don't come visit me till you get vaccinated. Go get vaccinated because right, do they that. need visits. Right. Absolutely. We all do, man. It's been a long couple of years here for sure. Yes. Uh, so, yeah, it, there's better treatments now for severe cases of COVID for sure. We uh, have we have antivirals. Right. We know about the cytokine storm. We can treat that. And we're also better at managing the initial symptoms with the shortness of breath. We know how to give high dose oxygen. We give the dexamethasone early. All that works. We also know there's a whole bunch of things that didn't work. IV bleach, it doesn't work. Right. It kills you. <laughs> you mean drinking bleach doesn't help? I mean, no, and look, I know. I, you know, look, I think it, it's been an interesting aspect of science, you know, and what you do, because it, it's not a, a static event, right? No. It, it's it, the ball and moves. We, and we did not know that right. much about right. this virus when it first came out. This virus is unlike any others. We didn't really have any information. And the information that first came out of China was not very helpful to the rest or, of the or world. Correct. Right, it was deceiving. And so it, you, you weren't, you know, garbage in, garbage out, right? right. So if and you didn't we, have the right- to even, to even prove that masks work, they had to invent a model right. that um, it's like a human head with a bellows <laughs> in it and they blow the virus out and see how the mass contain it. I, I mean, it's amazing they managed to do that. Yeah, they it, had to develop a model to be able to do that. The, there are some problems right now with the fact distinguishing people who come in with respiratory symptoms. All right. uh, Doc, we've been talking a little about, a lot about COVID, a lot about the new variant, uh, but there's, there's some other respiratory diseases that we've kind of seen in yeah. pop up, huh? For unknown reasons, this summer, we've had a large rise across the southeastern part of the U.S. in respiratory syntitial virus, which is a cough. I mean, which is cough, fever, aches. And usually we see it in the winter months, and we see it most, people think mostly in children, but grown-ups get it also. When, if you hospitalize a child with respiratory syntitial virus, and you don't put them in isolation, we're gonna have a couple of, of employees develop it. It's just- So it's very uh, infectious as it's well. It's very infectious also. And children have the, the croupy cough, you know, <laughs> and grown-ups get the, cough too it doesn't go away for like six months people say when it's going to end eventually it doesn't mean you have the virus it just means you left with that irritation that makes you cough the only way to tell the difference between respiratory syntitial virus and the eight and the coronavirus is by testing some type of PCR or something. We have rapid tests that pick up both respiratory syntitial and HIV, of, um, 
RSV COVID. and the corona, the COVID. And there, there, is, there is no other way. I, I mean, I have patients I would swear have COVID. They have all the symptoms and they have something else. Um, I saw one recently that had parainfluenza. There are other viruses that can do the same thing. The croupy cough, the right. trouble breathing, <clears throat> they all do the same thing. And you have to test to be able to tell them apart. And, and you can give it to other people. RSV, as you are calling it, uh, would that make you more susceptible to maybe getting corona no, at the same time? No, okay. it doesn't. It just means that it can be confused with it. And you would want to know what it is because, one, it's in different treatments. You you treat the symptoms the same way, but you we have specific antivirals and therapy for the COVID and different antiviral for the respiratory and tissue, which we usually don't use. Would so. you wear a mask as, with that as well? Yes. I, I have to, I've personally, I'm over 70, so I've been wearing a mask. I'm va fully vaccinated, but I know that I'm over 70, and therefore I don't have any other major health issues, but I know that I'm at increased risk. I also know that Terrebonne Parish, the numbers are just about, only about a third of the people in the parish are vaccinated. And I'm next to them in the grocery store line. They're coughing. And I don't know if they have a smoker's cough or they have some other infection. I'm going, huh, I need to wear a mask. Right. When I went to med school, my mother was a teacher. She gave me this advice, let no one cough on you. Right. And I think this Good was advice. great, great <laughs> advice. I mean, all these other diseases are infectious by that root, and we need to be really careful. And at this time of year, there's another problem down here. It's allergies. Mm -hmm. The gra all the grasses are blooming, and uh, and there's some mold too. I mean, we, yeah, all we... these things make us cough, and when you cough and you sneeze, and then you get secondary sinus infections, and you can't tell the difference. I, I can't diagnose this just by talking to someone. I usually need a test or two. Right, and, and I found that this different, you know, going around to different doctor's offices, talk to doctors as I do, um, they're booked solid. Whereas this would normally be the time of year where everybody was slow, where's all the people? This year, and I, I guess a and lot of And they're not in are, there getting it. Their routine vaccines. That's what I was about to say. A lot of them are getting the acute stuff taken care of. I mean, the uh, chronic stuff taken care of that they didn't go to last year. Yep. But, uh, but yeah, it's just been packed, and, and so it, it seems like just a different year. But a, a lot of a lot of people are seeing a lot of different stuff this summer. It's it's been a it's a very rough um, year for us. So. So um, yeah, you talked about some of the respiratory and, and some of the common treatments, and and, and just trying to, to catch a hold of that. So, what's your advice for for everybody? First of all, get vaccinated, right? I, Please get vaccinated. Yeah. Uh, there are few, very few people that can't make antibodies. Those people it won't do them any good. But everyone else needs to really give very hard consideration to getting vaccinated, and discussing their reasons why they don't want a vaccine with their physicians or nurse practitioners or whoever their primary care person is. I'm, I'm, I'm making a plea because, you know, we have a lot of people who don't believe in any vaccines at all. Vaccines merely take your own body and turn it on to, res to recognize part of a pathogen before it makes you real ill. With the use of vaccines, we have been able to eradicate smallpox from the world. It's another virus. It does different things, but it, it was so deadly. We've now been able to wipe it off the face of the earth. Polio is another vaccine preventable disease that we have not completely wiped off the face of the earth but we've come pretty yeah. close to it. Um, people of my age all know someone who has a limb that didn't develop or had problems because they had polio as a right. child. I trained at a hospital that remembered having a whole floor with nothing but hundreds of iron lungs on it. Right. So with vaccines, we've been able to do this. 
We if need to not do enough it. people are vaccinated, all it takes is one person with a wild case and everybody's got it. Right. So that's it. And it's not unnatural. It is your, turning your own body on. Right to recognize it. Well, Dr. Mary, thank you so much for being with us. Continue thank the fight. You for, thank you for asking me. <laughs> thank you on the front lines for sure. We'll be right back with more Body Time after this.